Performance Expo. My name is Joe Costello along with Lake Speed Jr. And we're back. 2022, a new year, a new expo. Oh yeah, and a new look. Check us out. Man, we got him fancy studio gigs yeah, now. Yeah. So hey, just everybody Rightfully knows. Rightfully so, by the way, given the great success of the previous Engine Performance Expos. Excellent point. So we're still here at Straub Technologies. We're just in a studio area. All the machines are right there behind the camera on the other side. And we've got some incredible guests already back there today. Yeah, it's really amazing. And the real answer is they kicked us out of the machine shop, right? Because they want to be able to do work and talk machining and all kinds of stuff like that and might as well put the studio guys in the studio. But no, I'm super excited because we're going to continue to evolve the engine project. We've got some heavy hitters from the world of NASCAR and motorsports going to come in and talk about their history, their projects and give their opinions. Uh, and it's great to see everybody again. Oh, yeah. I mean, seriously, me this morning, five minutes ago, Billy Godbold, John Callies, Keith Dorton are sitting there by one of the machines. So that's the whole point. Yeah, kick us out, put us back in here where we belong. Yeah. Let those guys get out there and let them touch the machines. So it is, it's great. Like you said, we're seven miles from Bristol Motor Speedway. Last time we did this, we had a decided NHRA drag racing flair. Yes. Which was fantastic. You know, WJ and Kazi and all the guys. This time, got a little more of a NASCAR vibe going on. We got Freddie Terza from VP, he used to work for Richard Childress Racing. We got Mark Cronquist from Joe Gibbs Racing. We've got Keith Thornton, so I mean, you can still have some drag racing guys. Tony Bischoff's coming. Yeah, yeah. You know, so we're not, we're not going right. to totally just ostracizing the drag racing guys, but I mean, this, the brain power in this building for today and tomorrow, man, through the roof. If this is your first Engine Performance Expo, understand it's just a geek out session, mm -hmm. right? We're gonna go deep into many different topics. There's gonna be a lot to learn, a lot of great information shared, and you're not gonna remember all of it. The best part is that you can go back and access these videos whenever you want. And exactly. in fact, a lot of it is uh, you know cut up and put out on the YouTube channels, et cetera, and so on. But we do want your feedback throughout the day. There are gonna be some opportunities to ask some questions, to get involved, yep. to, that is what this is our connection to you guys out there. Right. So, uh, you know, just be thinking and be ready. And if there is something that you didn't understand or you want to know more about, just put it up in the chat section and we'll get to it eventually. And uh, I think that's the best part of it, that it's right. interactive and you never know where the show's going to go. Exactly. This is unscripted. I mean, there are definitely pre-filmed segments that we're going to go throughout the day where we are visiting people's shops, right? So it's not just that we got people here. We've also gone to their shops and had in their environment and let them show us things that you would not normally get to see unless you were there. So this whole year of filming these videos and doing this project where, hey, by the end of the day, tomorrow, you're gonna see the project engine, this LS build, boosted, com be completely assembled and run on the dyno. And that's so, and you're gonna go see guys like Jimmy Barton, which by the way, I gotta give a huge shout out to Jimmy Barton and David Lewis and all the guys at Robert Yates Racing Engines, without their superhero intervention back in October, there's no way that this engine gets done. I mean, they went through Herculean efforts to make this happen. And then of course, Ben Strader and, and his group there at EFI University came through to do the dyno work for us. And the thing is, you're gonna get to see all of it, yeah. you know, in, in detail and, and pick up those little nuggets of information because you know, that, that's what the whole thing about, like I said, you can't pick up all of it and you can't digest all of this at once. But if we can spark an idea, create a connection, that's the goal. The whole idea of the Engine Performance Expo is to lift the industry. That we've got these guys who are gonna come in and they're gonna talk about profilometers and rings and rim finishing and CNC porting. We're gonna go through all that stuff today and tomorrow. And like I said, it's all on the YouTube channel. You can watch it forever. Absolutely. Ben Strader in the house. We're going to speak a lot with Ben. And who's the target, right? Like, well, if you are an interested person, generally, if you're mm -hmm. an engine builder or work in an engine shop yourself, if you own an engine shop, you're going to get the opportunity to see the best that there has ever been. Do the work. Talk about the work. And in my opinion, more importantly, like, philosophize a little bit yes. about how they came up with the solutions that they came up with. And ultimately, we're going to have the project engine on a dyno. Mm -hmm. well, there's, a, there's a story to be told. So we're not going to give away any secrets. No. So yeah, stay tuned and hang out for tomorrow to see what the final number is. And 
but it's going to be interesting. What's the final number, Lee? I'm not going to tell anybody. You got to wait, wait and see, and then you'll see what it Even is. Even I don't know the number. Right. That's that's the deal. But it's going to be a great project. And we're getting started off now. Remember, you can connect with us. We'd love to hear where you're watching from, listening from. Mm -hmm. And if you have a question, get it up there on the uh, chat section. Share with your friends, engineperformanceexpo.com. We'd love people to sign on and register throughout the day. Of course, it is free. You know that because you are watching, and it is going to exactly. be great. But let's get started, Lake. Yes, sir. Let's roll into our our first bit, the featured engine, the build video, it all started out like you, you guys went through the whole process, starting with? So cylinder heads and valve train are where we're at now, right? So in the first expo from last time, we went through a lot of the other choices. Now we're gonna be talking about cylinder heads and valve train. So here it goes. All right, welcome back, Engine Performance Expo viewers. We're here with the man, Chris Traub, buddy Ed Keebler. Now we're gonna talk about making some power with this LS build of ours, which we got, we've gone crazy, right? It's not just a, a one year, one build project. Now we're on to multi-years doing all kinds of crazy things. So of course, Chris, I put the onus on you to say, okay, future proof this engine for us a little bit. We know we're gonna have to change the parts because it's a big difference to turn 7,000 RPM and make some boost versus say 10,000 RPM and make some boost so for our 7000 rpm our, our layup our, our softball valve train setup tell us what we got and what we're doing here well we're going to start out with the uh liberty uh ls3 casting okay. uh, this is a casting that i get from liberty performance it's kind of a hybrid head um it has the stock ls7 valve angle at 12 degrees all right but it has the location of the ls3 intake so this allows this head to be more utilized because there's so many more manifold combinations for the LS3 compared to the LS7. Okay. So uh, this is a program that we've developed here at Strop Technologies with the porting of the cylinder head that we do on the Rottler EM69P, uh, our five axis cell. And this head is capable, once CNC ported, two one six five intake valve, a one six exhaust, it moves damn near 400 CFM on the intake and around 290-ish on the exhaust. So for a power adder application like we're doing uh, for the blower situation, it, it's a killer head for that type of boost. Um, very heavy casting uh, compared to some of the others. This thing's got about two pounds more aluminum in it. It looks substantial just sitting yeah, there right now. Yeah, it, does. it, it is. It yeah. is. And we've had extremely good luck with it on uh, projects uh, that we've had. And I know the guys at Liberty uh, sell quite a few of the castings to their customer base and stuff. Okay. So um, it works out good. And it, it's an affordable it's an affordable type cylinder head. And, and let's face it, uh, this is already an expensive hobby that we all enjoy uh, yep. with, uh, with our uh, toys and mm -hmm. stuff. So uh, bang for the buck when you can get it. Hey, why not? Well, it's cool, like I said, is the fact that you've uh, made a hybrid design where you've got the LS7 layout, but then you're making the port height for an LS3 so you have more manifold choices. That's kind of cool. So when so like when Ben's getting all the Spintron stuff set up for this thing, he really needs to be thinking LS7 Correct. in his head. Right. Okay, that's good because the, the uh, they called it the Spinal Tap, the 11,000 RPM yeah. engine they did was actually an LS7 layout. Correct. So that, that works in his favor. So talk about, okay, so those are the heads we're working with. So how does that dictate our cam choice and what we're doing with springs and things like that? Well, I mean, it's, uh, I have played with camshafts and I guess here in the last seven, eight years, I've gotten pretty, you know, I, I have a lot of camshaft business these days, but camshafts based on mathematical formulas that I've used for sure. almost two decades, three decades now, I guess. And based on what the cylinder head is doing, what we're doing boost, the cubic inch displacement. Uh, one thing early on, Lake, you and I agreed on was taking the piston speed. I'm yep. a firm believer in keeping piston speed down on blown turbo type applications so that you're behind, whether it be a centrifugal, a roots, or some hair dryers on this thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, this engine is a big bore. Short stroke, we're, st we're standard uh, stroke in this thing mm -hmm. at 3.622 uh, and a long connecting rod uh, going in this dark block. And so based off that combination and the amount of air that the blower's putting in it and with what that head can put in it, 
Uh, I can mathematically calculate out the area load needed, when I need to open the valve, when I need to close the valve, and how far I need to lift the valve. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. You, you mean you use math to back into what the lobe should be? <laughs> you just didn't go grab a lobe catalog and say, that's a cool looking lobe, let's use that. Well, it, 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 rough idle? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> rough idle. Three quarter, this is a three quarter race <laughs> cam, is what this is. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got some chrome eye rings to go with that, too, so you're really good. <laughs> well, and you, and, you, and you both touch on something that I deal with every day on a daily basis. So, any more, the analogy I use is I ask a customer, okay, where did you come up with this cross sectional area of cylinder head? Where did you come up with this camshaft? Well, I looked in the catalog, or I did this, or such and such suggested this. I said, okay. There's, you know, there's a mathematical formula for everything in the universe to calculate everything in the universe, okay? So the simple analogy I use is, would you hire a carpenter that guessed at every measurement before he cut? That he just went in and guessed at what he needed and cut the board and put it up there to see if it works? No. You'd spend a fortune building a house and we know what wood costs these Especially days. Especially today. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we ain't talking about that yet. So, so <laughs> mathematically, uh, when we came up with this bore stroke combination and the RPM range that we chose, yep. then I went in and calculated what we needed cross sectional area in the cylinder head and the area of the camshaft. To feed this. Yeah. To feed right. this, yeah. yeah. Now, at Straub Technologies, we don't have a Spintron. We're going to be doing that later on uh, for the Engine Expo, uh, Engine Performance Expo engine and stuff and be doing some testing. So I have to look at lobe intensity and do some calculations to my best ability to figure out what we need spring rate on mm -hmm. this thing. Uh, I have chose the pack uh, tool steel retainers. Uh, they're 1300 series valve spring, which I've had extremely good luck with the pack stuff uh, mm -hmm. on this type of stuff. Uh, we use their mini lock and then we use locators that we actually manufacture here in the States and uh, valve seals, which is a uh, Viton seal that we use on, on the cylinder head stuff. Very nice. um, the rocker arm system, shaft system, made by Harlan Sharp. Uh, I had actually supplied uh, Randy Jr. and Steve up at Harlan Sharp a cylinder head. Uh, so they have the shaft system available. It's not exclusive just to us. Anybody can order this. Uh, but it's a very affordable type system that I think is retail right around the $1,300, $1,400 set. So again, you've got a head potentially naturally aspirated with the amount of air this thing flows that can create 800 horsepower on pump gas with affordable parts. So when it all adds up, you're looking at a pair of heads, fully CNC ported, shaft, rocker arms, and everything else, about $3,400, $3,500. That's not wow. bad, no, especially no. with that quality of uh, springs and components and stuff. I mean, that's one thing I really like about that tool steel retainer is that it is much easier on the spring. Yes. Because tie, while it's light, it's hard. It wears stuff. You can see it in the oil. In fact, when we were doing some oil analysis a couple of years ago for some guys, they were shocked at how much overall engine wear occurred in the engines that had tie retainers versus steel retainers. And the only difference was that these older ones still had some tie retainers, same piston, same rod, same tune-up, everything going to actually the same team. But they had multiple cars they were running, and they're like, wow, these engine results have more wear Overall, because of that tie retainer, wears so much and it's hard and it wears everything else in the engine because the filter can't get rid of everything. Well, we've even, I've had uh, questions from customers on it because we have a line item uh, in our labor rate where it says spring for tie retainer and we charge 80 bucks. Well, with you, the cone uh, sanding disc that you have to use for detail and spring, you're taking the spring apart, you're getting all the edges and everything else. Literally, it's about another hundred dollars more to put a tie retainer on there. So when you balance that, you've got to do that to much less spring prep time when you're looking at a tool steel retainer. Mm -hmm. It kind of makes sense that the tool steel is actually a, a better mousetrap. Oh, situation. in my opinion, yeah. If if right. you have the option mass wise to use it, right. you use it. Right. I'm not saying there's not times where the tie being a less mass is what you need to do because it's the right choice dynamically. Okay. But know that there's a price to pay for that. That when you choose to use tie, you are choosing to make life more difficult for yourself. <laughs> and there's going to be more wear right. related to it. Right. Not that tie is bad. It's just the, those are the, the properties of it. Like I said, can't intensity. The, the more intense it is, 
the more energy you're putting into the system, it, it's it's almost goes. We've all heard the old saying, "Happy wife, happy life." I mean, <laughs> it, it, it needs to be a happy valve train, or it's going to be an angry engine. So, I think a lot of people say, "Yeah, happy spring, happy engine." Yeah, unhappy spring, really unhappy engine. Right, <laughs> right, coming up really quick. Yep. So. Chris, talk about, I, I, I love engines, always have, grew up, you know, building a uh, few engines on, on, on uh, my own, and, and, you know, we're talking about this, and this is going to be a 7,000 RPM motor? 7,000 RPM blown uh, application is, yep. what, is what we're doing uh, in the first go-round. So these heads come with seat and guides in them. Since we're going to a boosted type application, uh, we will be cutting those seats, uh, cutting the guides out. Okay. Uh, we'll be going to a beryllium uh, copper seat. Uh, we will be putting titanium valves uh, from Victory in this. Seats and guides uh, coming from CHE. On the valve guides, due to the heat, uh, we will be going to a stainless uh, valve guide on the exhaust side. Okay. And then we'll be putting a, uh, a high temp manganese bronze uh, that Claude makes out there on the intake side uh, for the cylinder head. And again, this is all for the longevity of the engine and the investment. I mean, people. You know, you try to, you talk to a customer that's not familiar with uh, a lot of this boosted, or, or I'll tell them, I guess I'll back up and I'll say, do you want performance, budget, or um, longevity? Right. You only get to pick two. Right. So if you want longevity and you want performance, you throw the budget out the door. It's not going to happen. Okay. Yep. Back to the old good, fast, or cheap. Right. Pick two. Can't have three. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yep. So these heads are going to see uh, an investment of probably close to just in valves, uh, beryllium copper seats, and valve guides. We're probably putting an additional twenty-four hundred dollars. So what a that. lot of people would actually pay for a complete set of heads, we're just putting in parts. Now that doesn't include the machine work and everything else. But to live under the circumstances that we're trying to do with this engine, that's what's going to have to happen. And then later on, when we build the, you know, nine, eight thousand, nine thousand, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna, we're just gonna let uh, Lake tell us where he wants it to go. Right. And, and we'll find out. Right. Yeah, Me we'll and Ben, we're gonna go crazy. Yeah. yeah you know, I've been. I was like, right. hey, shoot for the moon. Just keep trying. Yeah. This, that's the whole thing. I said that investment in parts is really about margin of error. Right. It's the ability to hold the heat, hold form, hold shape, so we can lean on it harder to find out what's this thing really capable of. So like I said, we all know you can go take it, an LS engine out of the junkyard and put a big turbo on it yep. and make 1,500 horsepower. We, I mean, we've, for a while, we, we say, oh yeah, that's the thing, is for how long? Right. And how repeatable is it? Right. And what's it gonna do? And what we want here is we want a good test piece that for the expo, we can show you guys and gals these different things we're doing and show you the ABA. Not just say, hey, yeah, it's better because we said it's better. It's like we can show you the difference between this part and that part. And as Warren said, you can't toot it up if you blew it up. So we're trying to build in some insurance here so we don't blow it up. Right. <laughs> exactly. Well, and I think you hit on a point, Lake, is this, it's the foundation. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a great cylinder head, and we're putting copper beryllium seats in it. And we're putting good valve guides in it, and we're doing a lot of things. Now, will that those particular valves and those springs work for 10,000? Nope, probably not. No. But the basic cylinder head, the foundation, is there. We've done all the work to it. Correct. Now it's just a matter of maybe going to a lighter valve and a lighter retainer and, and, and uh, try the different parts and right. see what works. Right. So, so we're building the basic, the foundation, to where we don't have to redo all of this when we pump it up. Exactly. And, and Chris, we talk about valve seats. Talk a little bit about, because I know there will be a lot of questions out there, well, where you're putting, you're, you're going to remove those brand new seats out of this cylinder and put copper beryllium in. What's the reasoning? You know, well, there's going to be a lot of customers out there or, or potential customers that, that are saying, well, why do I need to do that? If you take two steel hammers and swing them towards each other, they're going to bounce off each other. Okay? You take a brass hammer, and you take one steel hammer and swing them in together, they're going to stick, okay? For, for somebody that does not have an engineering degree, and I don't ever claim to be a machinist, but I've got a lot of good people here that, and, and a lot of good mentors over the years. So that beryllium seats at the RPM that we're getting ready to turn this old girl, mm -hmm. it's, that's, that 
titanium valve will set down on that seat. We don't have to worry about the bounce. So the, so the, the beryllium copper for us is almost, it, it's a longevity type deal. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's why we're going to take the seats that come in standard in these Liberty heads and take those out. The valve guides, the stainless steel on the exhaust, it's because of the heat. So now, in the first generation of this motor, would we need it? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, the, the, the bronze guide in the head would probably be just fine. But since we're going to hammer on this thing, and Lake is going to hold the stick, he's even going to notch the dyno chassis out a little bit more, just get a little bit more RPM out of it, we might as well just go ahead and do it now so that we've got that insurance later on that it's already been done. Again, another thing that I tell customers all the time, it's cheaper to do it once than it is to do it twice. Oh, yeah. So collateral damage always costs more money. Yes, Correct. Right. Always. Correct. Yes. Uh, essentially, all that work can be done right here in these three machines right next to us. Correct. By Perfect. one operator, he can be CNC porting one shoulder head while he's removing seats and redoing the valve job and doing the guide work on the other hand while this old girl right here is making chips. All right, any other last thoughts? Are we gonna hand it back to Mr. Costello and let him carry on? I'd say let's hand it back to Mr. C. All right. What a day, what a day, what a day. Uh, yeah, my brain, my brain is swollen. I've learned so much today. They told us, don't start cars. We are not gonna listen.